Good evening and welcome to the regularly scheduled Central and Board of uh, Select Board meeting. Today is Monday, June 22nd, 2020. And uh, <clears throat> we're ready to get rolling. And tonight on our agenda, we've got an update from the, the Honorable Ben Barshavsky, who I see in the middle of my screen there on the Sunderland Schools. We've got some committee appointments. Um, we've got uh, an item, a tree to talk about on North Main Street. Um, we'll just briefly talk about outdoor dining, but we don't have any major topics under that issue now. Um, and then when I see George out there, we get some highway equipment we're going to talk about. Going to approve our minutes, and then uh, we'll just briefly talk about um, what we're working on now, our goals for 21, um, the town administrative performance and evaluation. We've got a COVID-19 state of emergency update, as always, and then each select board and town administrator updates. So um, why don't we start off with, uh, with you, Ben? How about that? Thanks for joining us this week. Yeah, my up. pleasure. Good evening, everyone. How are you doing? Good, Ben. Thanks for making the time. Absolutely. So I, I just wanted to update the select board on a few different things that are happening. Um, as you may or may not be aware, uh, the district has put together a total of eight separate committees um, working towards uh, the return to school uh, come late August. DESE will be uh, releasing their return to school plan tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, June 23rd. So we'll have a lot of guidance to go off of based on that plan. But the eight different committees are made up of uh, administrators at central office, building principals. And then also we have a huge number of teacher and instructional assistants volunteering their time over the summer to serve on these committees. And I just, that's one of the, big things I wanted to highlight for our community is that our, our, our teachers are going above and beyond right now in an effort to allow all of us to safely return to school, whatever that may look like. Uh, the committees range from a governance group, which is made up of our district administrators. There's a facilities and safety committee that's going to look at uh, proper sanitization techniques, school operations, everything from food services to bus transportation and how the, um, how the site is, uh, each building is going to be used, depending on DESE's guidance as a uh, number of students per classroom or whatever they're coming up with for proper social distancing. That committee is going to be looking at all of our class classroom spaces across all five schools and determine um, you know, what we'll be able to, to do. There's a curriculum development and instruction delivery committee Health and Wellness. The Health and Wellness Committee will be releasing a long list of resources for our families and students and staff within the next week or two, um, specifically focusing on, on mental health. And um, a variety of resources are going to be included in that. There's a Technology Committee, and then also there's a Family Outreach Committee. That committee will be releasing a survey to all families within the next week or so as well to get input as we prepare to reopen the school in the fall. So a lot of great things are happening with that. I also wanted to let everyone know that the playground, um, we met uh, Jeff, um, Jim Ewing, and um, Caitlin Rock has also been collaborating, but we have plans to reopen the school playgrounds. We just need to put the signs up. Those signs were finalized today. And also, uh, there is a anti-racism and equity committee that has been formed with teachers across the district, as well as um, families and parents and um, community members. And that work, that committee is going to be doing a lot of research over the summer. And then we'll have some uh, just kind of drop in volunteer meetings over the summer. And then once school returns in the fall, we'll be including students on that. Uh, committee as well. So that's kind of all I had for, for the update. Um, just felt like that was some important information to share with the select board. So Ben, how do you feel about uh, opening school? Do you, uh, is it looking positive? Um, I, I do. I do think it's looking positive. You know, I, I think it's important that we do have, are able to see all of our students 
in some capacity face to face, whether they're in kindergarten or whether they're in 12th grade and whatever that looks like, we're still trying to figure it out. But I, I do think we'll be able to reopen in the fall with uh, following, you know, the CDC guidelines for health and safety. There's still a lot to be worked out though, for sure. Yeah, I, I know even it, it's tough. I mean, you know, even, you know, the HVAC system, you know, are you, you know, do you do anything special with that? Do you, you know, you change your filters, you, do you open windows? I mean, there, there's a lot, lot on your guys' plate right now, you know? So, so I guess, I guess if there's anything that, that you need of us, or if there's anything that you need and studies, you know, you may, you, you may want to bring in a consultant to go through the school if, you know, to make yourself and, and your parents, if you need someone to come in, I mean, we have the ability, we do potentially have the ability, Jeff, right, to uh, add, add that, we could add to, to our additional funding mechanism coming up. So, I mean, whatever you guys, whatever, whatever you guys need to, to make yourself as comfortable as possible. I, I do know I have niece and nephew, I was taught their fifth and third graders, excuse me, now sixth fourth graders, Mm. five and a half but whatever um and they miss being in school so yeah we we miss the students also and it was you know kind of a a bittersweet end to the school year where we held a, a virtual sixth grade graduation last wednesday night um so it was a nice nice way that we were able to honor the students but still obviously would have much rather preferred that happen in person if there's anything you do if anything you want ask us okay a absolutely i appreciate that we appreciate everything that the all the teachers have been doing on those committees and everything too because it's a lot of work so <clears throat> all right yeah. all right thanks you're welcome appreciate that's, it that's all i had all right thank you all right <clears throat> next up on our agenda we have um actually you know i think Well, let's do our let's do our appointments. We've got our slate of appointments here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we have our Council on Aging. We've got Economic Development Committee, the Energy Committee, Franklin County Solid Waste Rep. That's vacant. The Franklin County Regional Planning Board, the Technical School Committee Rep, the Hazardous Waste Committee, the Historic Commission, the Housing Committee. The parking clerk, which was appointed, uh, the personnel committee, the recreation committee, registrars, South County EMS, uh, where the dish committee is on hold. We're going to be doing some other stuff with that. <clears throat> the Sunderland emergency, excuse me, Sunderland emergency preparedness team, the teacher union 38 and IA instructional rep, town council, veterans agent, upper pioneer Valley services, veterans, excuse me, veterans, Graves officer, and that's actually vacant, and this is the Upper Pioneer, Pioneer Valley one, the Veterans Memorial Oversight Committee of the Village Center Committee, the ZBA, and the ZBA associate members and the chair. So we usually do those as a slate. You got Mr. the uh, first page. I was gonna say, you've got the first page also, David. For Motion. Uh, uh, yes. Motion. Right, because I've got two pages on it. Uh, okay. The total of three. Oh. But even even You're even right. at that, you are correct. <laughs> I had stuck behind something else. We have a yeah. 120 North Main Agricultural Commission, anti-harassment officer, capital improvement planning committee, civil defense, community pathways, community preservation, conservation commission, and constables. So we had a we had a motion. Do we have a second on that? I'll, I'll second. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero. And do we, Jeff? Do we have um, the vacancies posted out there? All of them online, in case anybody's uh, interested in those. Um, I don't know that it's that clear on the website, but there was actually. Uh, an open space and recreation committee meeting last week and they talked about 
suggesting that all va- there be one page with all vacancies to help right. encourage people to that apply. So yeah. we will be looking at how to streamline that and encourage more people. Okay, yeah, that'd be great. Because then if you're just wondering if there's any vacancies, you go to the one vacancy page and that would make it a lot easier. All right, great. Um, <clears throat> our next topic is a sugar maple in front of 134 North Main Street. And that's kind of good that George is on, our tree warden also too. So if we got to talk about that. <clears throat> so, so I understand you had some discussions with the owner and everything too, um, Jeff? Yeah, so I think that they're during bad storms, high winds, um, some branches have been coming down. I think that there's the tree was in fair to good shape from the independent arborist report um right right now the plans for the north main street reconstruction sort of jog around the tree to give the roots a little bit more room um but that a it makes the sidewalk not straight in that area and b is going to require a permanent easement um and the resident whose home the tree is in front of um, has had no objections to taking it down. I think would prefer to have it taken down. Um, so I think that there are a number of benefits and we can certainly look to replace it. Um, I know there are a lot of maple trees along North Main, maybe w- with something else or um, a smaller yep. tree that wouldn't have as immediate an impact. Uh, well, immediate might not be the right word, but short-term impact to the sidewalk um, as this has fairly significant roots. Right, and we'll get like a little tree variety in there too, which would be good and something a little more of a proper scale maybe. What the, do you have any, uh, any thoughts, George, on that? I mean, that they've called in the past about that tree. Um, there is some, not a very lot, but there is a lot of some dead limbs up in the tree that need to be pruned out of it, but it's nothing yeah. significant. Um, I think if you're going to redo the sidewalk, it's, probably not a bad tree to to come down and replant a different one there uh, just because the roots are so I mean the sidewalks like touching that tree right now so it wouldn't be a bad idea to take it down okay and for a replacement tree would that would we be looking at the budget for that for the 120 for the north main or would we be pulling that out of Mm -hmm. our other tree budget no there's a there's a south main north main street tree fund Okay. Uh, that you could take that tree out of. I think there's still money in that, that, that uh, we've taken money out in the past to replace some of the trees down on South Main and North Main Street. Okay. All right. That's good. So, George, right. you're, you'll take the tree down and put it up after the sidewalks? Yeah. I, like, when yeah. we're – some of the trees that we've been replacing, we yeah. grind the stumps up, and then I move the trees back away from the sidewalk. Right. I'll move them back uh, three or four feet from the sidewalk from where they previously are, just so we're starting to get everything away from the tree, you know, the, the sidewalk belt. So they're not yeah. starting to grow into the sidewalks like we have the Makes problem sense. now in some of the trees. So Sounds good. Thank you. And, and looking at the picture too, if you move it back a little bit, I get it that much farther away from the power lines too. So one less thing to worry about. Yeah. Which is good. All right. <clears throat> And, and I did talk, and I'll, I'll just confirm before any changes are made, but I talked to CHA and the engineer said, I, I made sure that if, if the decision was to remove the tree, it wouldn't change the timeline. There wouldn't necessarily be anything. They said they just have to rework that little portion of the sidewalk. Okay, that's but good. Before I, they do I, would, I would just schedule it and take it down. I wouldn't even go through spending the extra money into, the, into that, uh, that fund. Just because we're already shorthanded, short money on that that account, um, so I, I would I would take it out of the tree account. That way we we don't have to deal with that, and we have money for the other stuff that we really need for. Yeah, I tend to agree with George. Anything you can keep out of that project at this point is good, whether it's CHA documentation or administrative work or change requests. Let's just do what we can on our end. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, we have, we got to really try to save money and and uh, put that extra pipe in at the end of 
got to, you know, to connect it to school street and stuff like yep. that. Cause to do that, pro- that part of it after is just, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. What's well, the first thing you do when you finish the road, the line striping is done. You come back and you yeah. dig it up, dig, dig it, it up. up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fresh pavement waiting to be cut into. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh. <laughs> so you right. want to, uh, Jeff, do you need this in the form of a vote? I just uh, wanted to kind of get your opinion on it, whether yeah. we should cut it down or not. That's all. Yeah. Yeah, I just I, I would say go for it. Okay. If the, okay. if, George, if the resident doesn't have a problem, I would say just let's let's make it go away and let's okay. move on. Sounds good. Hey, George, while you're there. Yes. Yep. Uh, the uh, the dead elm in the uh, veterans memorial thought. Yeah, thought. Jeff. Jeff just talked to me about that. Uh, we'll cut that thing down and uh, chip it up and get rid of it. Yeah, I, may, maybe let's let's let it not do. Let's not plant any there. For, for a little while just to see what yeah happened. yeah we cut one down a couple of years ago i think pretty close to that one and we never replanted it so um some of the, every periodically every couple are starting to die so we'll just keep an eye on them and see what's going on right, we had the la- we had the last one tested and then uh they said it didn't have dutch elm disease it just died they said it didn't have dutch elm nope huh. it did not just died from something else, huh? I guess so, yeah. yeah. Sugar okay. maple, I guess. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, thanks. Wait, the way they're filling in, George, I mean, they're, they're, you know, the crowns aren't getting any uh, to spread right now. They're all intertwined. I was just... Right. Yeah, maybe. no, they're, I think they're filling in pretty good just the way they are. I mean, that one that's dead in the back there, it's already, it's already kind of filled in around it anyway, so... It, it has. Uh, we were looking at it the other day, and it's like, yeah. All right. I agree, George. Thank you. Yep. All right. And then this is next topic is also with George. We've got a highway equipment piece we've got to talk about. One of our trucks uh, has had some damage. So what's the, what's the latest on that one? So our 2000 international uh dump truck single axle dump truck the frame it's a double wall it's a double frame they call it so the two frames itself over the years have gotten rust in between them and it finally popped so the subframe for the dump body has sprung and popped two two large bolts out of it and kind of twisted so basically we can't use it right now the dump body is uh in uh usable and it's going to cost between 15 and 20,000 to fix it to put a new sub, to put a whole new frame underneath that truck. Yep. So um, I talked to Tom, Tom a little bit about this. I don't know if we want to purchase a used, another used truck for now. Um, Cause that was the truck that we were going to keep. And we were going to replace the other 2000 uh, freight liner that we have, because that truck has cost us the most money in the last 10, 10, 10 years. So that was the truck that was going to be on on the list to replace next year after we paid for the the Western Star that we have. I think this is the last year for our, our payment on the Western Star, and then we're going to hopefully get into another five year loan program like we did for the Western Star. Um, I think if we purchase a used truck, we could probably get at least six seven years out of it. This I mean this truck that we have now we bought it used back in 2011, I think, 2010, 2011, somewhere in there. Um, so we've gotten quite a few years out of it. So I think if we buy a used truck to replace this one and, and next year buy a new one for the truck that needs to be replaced, and then by the time we pay for that truck, this truck will be in line to be replaced. So it kind of makes a little bit of sense to, to do that whether I don't know if we can use chapter 90 to buy a used truck or not. Um, I know we talked to, I talked to Tom about that a little bit. Um, So I think that's a little bit of research that we have to do. I know I sent Jeff an email that uh, Daryl Amaral sent me from the state uh, about purchasing equipment through, through chapter 90. I know we don't really like to do that, but I mean, I found a truck right now up in Vermont. It's a 2009 um it's 
probably more than what we need, but it's a, it's a really nice looking truck. It's in good shape. It's got very few miles on it. Um, it's a lot of those trucks that come from Vermont and New Hampshire up there. They, they usually buy their trucks. They're like a five-year lease program up there. They, they buy trucks every five years. So after five years, they yeah. turn the truck back in and then they get another one. So that truck's about, you know, I mean, it's a 2009, so it's a few years older than, than the five years, but, um, I've been looking at it and it's, it's a pretty nice truck. They are, they're asking like 29,000 for it. Okay. So we're going to have to, it's, do it's about, it's about not, yeah, it's about nine grand more than what it would cost to put a new frame under the, the truck that we have, but it's a lot newer too. So. Right. So it kind of balance out. Yeah. But we just have to figure out how we can come up with the money. That's all. Yeah. Cause right that, now, that's right now that's, yeah, right now that truck that we have, it's we can't use it for anything unless unless I pull the whole dump body off of it and then mount the frame or mount the sander right to it. We could possibly use yep. it just for the winter time to get by for now. Um, so that's another option. Okay. So I'm just kind of looking at a little guidance from you guys to, to figure out whether we want to go with the used truck or do we want to put the sander on that old truck and do a little bit of work to it and go from there i guess yeah but uh what, what are your thoughts uh scott and tom scott you're fine well you know the used truck uh, when we first went after that there was a there was some a little bit of hewing and crying about why are we buying a used truck not from george but you know why are you spending money on a used truck and here we are you know nearly a decade later that was a wise move it seems maybe if there's another used truck out there that is fitting in. I like George's description of the schedule of replacement, kind of, you know, your dead ends, you, you probably add a new one, you, you infill with another one, you kind of have a sequence. I think that's, that's just good planning. The question becomes, you know, you need a special town meeting and you have relatively little funding. So how do we go about that? I have mixed feelings about using um, chapter 94 uh, equipment, rolling equipment, but I'm also empathetic. Yeah. I'm empathetic to the positions. Like, so you got a truck you can't use. Well, that right. doesn't help. That doesn't help the team get their work done. I, I, so I you know, my, my thought is if you could, if you could, if you could fix the other truck for twelve to fifteen thousand dollars and make mm -hmm. it last for, and and make it last for five years, then you had, then you put us on schedule. Yeah. Um. Now, if you put if you put twenty thousand dollars into this truck that that's now broken, I guess you'd have to look at you say, okay, it's a, it's a two thousand mechanically. How, how is it applied to frames? Right. Um, and still, you know, but, but you look at you look at something that's a two thousand. I mean, you're, you're going to be pushing. 30 years old and right. you know broke for 30 years and 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 and, and you, you you'd have if you're gonna spend twenty thousand dollars on that you're gonna want that to last for at least what seven eight years mm -hmm. yep you know so will it last for seven or eight years i i don't think you know personally i don't i don't think so, so and and so if i go ahead go ahead please finish so, so if you if you if you can find a, a used vehicle, follow the procurement law, get a, a, a nice vehicle for the same amount of money, and it can be bought. And again, I don't. Our goal is not to be buying equipment from Chapter Ninety. That right. that said, how else will we if if we were to try to repair? That twenty thousand dollars, where we get that twenty thousand dollars to repair, right, it. right, right. We go chapter nine, so right. I, right. I, I got, and, and then if you spend, if you get twenty nine thousand dollars for a truck, and maybe and find somebody to give us three, four thousand dollars. Just, I mean, that engine in the truck is probably worth it. The cabin engine are probably worth it. So, I th so, I think you could sell that truck to a. Like I talked to a couple of the people that were going to give me a price on fixing it. They said it would make a, like a perfect farmer's vehicle truck, but because they could kind of patch it together and the farmer could use it. But yeah. for us to, us to use it on the road every day, it doesn't make sense to use it because of, of the liability 
of them fixing it and kind of just putting it back together. But a farmer, you could probably get four or five grand out of it, probably. See, so for basically for the same cost. And and Scott, I remember a few years ago we had one of our neighbor neighboring town. We had a big we had a big snowstorm and it both their trucks. Mm -hmm. um, and we ended up so I, I mean it's snow removal and and we know and we know we tried leasing trucks we know how much trucks cost to lease them and it's a bargain. We would have bought if for the cost we lease a truck for that year we could have bought a new truck. Yeah. So. George, if you, I, I would say, I, I would look at, personally, I would recommend see what you get for the best price and see what you could uh, look at funds for selling the vehicle. And, okay. okay. My, that's my opinion. So I got one, one guy gave me a price of 9,600 bucks just for the frame to replace the frame. So then you, you're talking probably, because then they got to take everything off that truck to put on a new frame. So you're talking yep. another 10 grand. He told me 20 grand. Another guy said he could probably get the frame a little bit cheaper. But then the labor's about the same, so you're talking probably eighteen. So it's like two thousand. Um, so I don't. Uh, I'll talk to Daryl a little bit more and read the email that he gave me. But I don't know if we can use Chapter ninety or if we can try try to find it another way. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, right. that'll be home, that'll be homework for us. Yep. Figuring out yep. what to do, we can do. But right. I'll. I'll I'll call the, the truck company that I've been kind of peeking at this truck about and get some more information about it. And I will uh, get it all together and I'll, I'll get it to you guys. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. If we can look at Jeff, like squeezing some money out of somewhere. Is there an opportunity to, or I guess what, what's the board's feeling on, on financing, knowing that we're probably going to be financing a truck next year do we want to this would we prefer a lump sum for this if we're doing a replacement versus i think it really is driven by the scale yeah right we need to we need to we need to know where uh, avenues for available funds uh somewhere in the thirty thousand dollar range are yeah. right that that's our homework where are we going to come up yeah. with 30 grand i'm just making a number up but i'm kind of that taken off of George's lead here. So we got to find a way to come up with $30,000. I wouldn't necessarily go out and borrow $30,000 no. for a truck. Right. Not but, for a used one. Yeah. But you know, we need to also understand where, where we can, where that money can come from. And this is a challenging, challenging time. Yeah. So George, you'll touch base with the folks from chapter, um, uh, state and we'll look at locally what what mechanism if any we have bottom line yes is, you know bottom line is it's still going to end up being an appropriation by, by town meeting of some kind right. right unless it's chapter unless it's chapter 90 money i mean it's true all right thanks great thank you thanks george Sorry for the bad news. No, <laughs> yeah, this is what it is. You gotta have yeah. tools. You gotta have tools to work, right? Yeah. Exactly. I hear you. All right, you guys have a great night. Thanks. Thanks you too. You too. Thank you. Bye. Unfortunately, sometimes things do break, which is too bad. <clears throat> All right. So next up on our agenda, we've got our minutes from June fifteenth. I'll move the make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero on the minutes. Yeah. All right. Um, actually, I'll, I'm going to just rearrange this a little bit. Let's do the, because uh, I'm sure <laughs> folks are dying to do our COVID-19 updates. So why don't we do that one next? How's that? How are you, Lori? I'm good. How are you? All right. Thanks. Let's, I uh, have nothing new to report. Um, just listening to the governor's recommendations and following along. I participated in the EDS meeting on Wednesday when they talked mostly about what they're going to do with the schools and how that's going to look starting up. Yep. Well, I suppose at this point, no new updates is a good thing. I agree. You know? Yeah. 
and uh, sort sort of along those lines that we had that we did have outdoor dining on the agenda. One of our places was going to look at uh, doing some work there, but they're, they're changing their mind on that. So I don't think we really have any more outdoor dining things, especially with the ability to potentially start opening up, opening up indoors now. So we'll see how that pans out. And a lot of feedback there. At this point, no news is good news. That's true. That's true. All right. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Have a good evening. All right. Thanks. You too. Thanks, Lori. All right. Now, we also have our select board goals, which we're still kind of going over. Um, and then our town administrator performance evaluation, which we're coming up on at some point soon there. So. It's amazing how fast time has flown. And you just kind of got thrown right into that frying pan too, didn't you? You know, part of the job. Yeah. <laughs> um, does anybody want to discuss anything about the goals at all right now? Or are we... Uh, on are we the, select on goals, the select board goals, the select board goals like to find our last printed copy, see how we did against those. I know it's a couple of years in the rears, but still yep. something worth looking at to see how we did and then uh, use that as the straw man going forward. Yeah, that makes sense. Give us a little springboard to go off of. Mm -hmm. um, would you be able to dig those up, Jeff, and then like shoot them around to us and we can look at them? And... I will do my best. My institutional memory is not in this week, so it, it, <laughs> maybe a week or two. No, that's that's all right. right. If I can't find it easily, but yes. It's all right. FY21 is not going anywhere super fast right now, so we just – dipped our toes into it so all right thank you <clears throat> um now we reach the exciting select board updates portion of the meeting do if i could mr chair do we want to appoint yeah. a member of the board to do the pe with the town administrator and goals for 21 i thought we already did that yeah Didn't we, we did that, that last week two weeks we I think the last. yeah okay yeah sorry that last that's week's okay back. All good. All right. <clears throat> um, Tom, you want to do you have any updates this week? Um, I, I, I just want to say that um, I, I'm more looking at the, um, the schools getting back, back to, um, I, I just hope, Jeff, I just, I, 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 I hope that you work with Ben and the superintendent um, and be a resource for them. Um, I, I think that um, I, I think they people are very concerned. They're going to, they're, they're going to be concerned. I, but I think it's our job right now to, to, to help them put the best plan together possible. Um, and, and then I, I would recommend also is that if we could get the plan out there or, or if you can convey to the, to the school, and, and I'm sure that they understand this, I, I'm, I'm just speaking as somebody that's, you know, we don't, we're not see the day to day what goes on, but to get information out there, you notice a lot of the colleges and universities and secondaries, you know, schools are coming out with plans. Um, but that way it gives um, parents an opportunity to, if they have questions, it gives them a, an opportunity to uh, have those questions addressed. Um, and instead of waiting, and, and I, and, but with everything that's happened, I, I don't know. I mean, the governor now we're, you know, we're in step two of phase two, um, allowed to eat inside. You wanna go get a tattoo, you can go get a tattoo, you get your nails done. <laughs> a sandwich and a tattoo. <laughs> hey, I, 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 I just think that um, we we we're 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 moving. Um, I think the governor on the you know you may not agree with what's happening, but right now Massachusetts uh, a city of of infection and has gone down. It stayed pretty low. I mean, we're, let's let's wear a mask and be smart. Up right now, and and I I I would hope people don't. I, I I hope wearing a mask doesn't become a uh, 
a political statement because I don't think it's a political statement. I just think it's, I just think it's smart right now. You protect yourself and you protect others. So, I would agree. It's it's science, not politics. Uh, and and yeah, yeah I, I mean, you know, listen, listen, listen to a lot of the experts. I mean, you know, you look at surgeons, surgeons, surgeons. Op, you know, people say masks don't don't matter, and it, and I just say, well, you ever had? I never seen a doctor in a in a, <laughs> in a that that hasn't worn a mask. So they've been doing that for a long time. So I guess they think it matters. So. That's right. I, that's right now. That's good enough. I just, I just want to, I just want to be able to walk into the, the blue hair or the go ten or the bubs or the wild roots or whatever, and and or stop at Dunkin' Donuts and be able to get a coffee. And if that means I have to wear a mask for five minutes, okay, I wear a mask for five minutes. I'm, I'm okay with that. So, I, I just, I just hope people look at the end goal. The end goal is get our economy back up and running, and we can have an economy with people wearing a mask. So, I, I just I just want us I, I want demos to be successful. I want I want Ronnie to, to get people going back to Ronnie's and the Dove's Nest for for you know the the road thing. I just think it's what we have to do right now. So let's let's do it. Let's move forward, work work together. Let's and let science take care of it. So mm -hmm. that's it, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Scott? Uh, we had our first, I'm going to sneeze. You called on me and now I can feel it coming. <laughs> nice. Good play. Our first uh, yeah. police contract negotiation meeting uh, was last Thursday. Yeah. There. Thank you. And uh, we scheduled the next three uh, meetings and uh, we're sharing, we're supposed to have, have shared, if we haven't already, the uh, uh, talking points. So. Looking forward to this Thursday's meeting. All right. Thanks. And I have got our first Union 38 negotiation meeting scheduled for Wednesday at, I think, 1 o'clock. So we'll, uh, we'll see where we start on that one. So that's all I've got. And now I think we'll turn it over to Jeff. It's been pretty quiet, right? I saw you up front there with the checkerboard and the hound dog, and it's kind of relaxing. You know, yeah. my sunshade. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, a couple things that I just wanted to mention. Last week, the fire chief um, gave myself uh, and Liz, and I'm going to blank on Liz's name, but she helped uh, Deerfield set up the emergency dispensing site. So we invited okay. her just to take a look at, at the public safety complex and the space and, and give us some feedback on, on our initial plans for having a, an emergency dispensing site that uses that location. And uh, she was really yeah. impressed with the site. She thought it would work well. So the three of us sort of walked through it, talked it over. Um, I think the next uh, next steps are, are to update the plan, put a bit more detail into it, um, and then go back to the EDS group and say, what do you think of this? And, and get some additional feedback from the wider group um, as we develop that plan. Um, Is that, was that the, uh, public, uh, the public nurse, the uh, public health nurse in Deerfield, Jeff? No, she... She was, and then I believe that she moved out of the area and is a public health nurse elsewhere now. Okay. Um, and I can, I can get her name, and I'm just blanking on it right now. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, All right. So that, that was good. Um, also wanted to mention that last week, the library expanded their curbside pickup. Um, nice. So it's Mondays and Fridays, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., uh, Wednesdays, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., so they have an evening, and then Saturdays, 12 to 4, so they have a, some weekend time, too. Um, and That's great. they're preparing for when they're allowed to reopen physically, um, going through the training, all the mandatory safety requirements that, that we'd all have to do, any organization has to do. Um, and so when they're able to be open to the public again, they're looking forward and, and they're going to be ready to do it. Excellent. Um, 
And then how, how about the town hall, Jeff? Pardon? How's the town hall looking? Town hall's looking good. Um, I think that in general, um, we we are making plans. We've started purchasing the equipment um, to maintain social distancing, plexiglass barriers, uh, the countertops. So we we have a plan moving forward. I think that given the level of service that staff has been able to provide and the feedback from residents that things have been fairly smooth. Um, I don't think that we're rushing into reopening, um, but we're, we're certainly uh, preparing to. So I think w once we get all that equipment in and set up, you know, we'd like to do a dry run to make sure that everything is good. We have signage, we have social distancing marked off for tape. Um, yep. Makes sense. Yep. So the soft opening. Exactly. Yep. Huh. And um, <clears throat> speaking of buying stuff, the my my second class for <laughs> for uh, procurement is available online. It's going to start in, unfortunately not until August, and it's a nine week program. But it's self paced, so maybe I can cram nine weeks into three days or something and there you go. <laughs> certified early. <laughs> um, so that that's the that would be the second of three classes that I have to take for the minimum requirements, but that, that was the next available one. So I wanted to update you on that. And then last week we had talked about that new grant program that the state's trying to turn around quickly. And I think it opened today. Um, and there was a, a suggestion. Um, one of the things that the village center committee was looking at was sort of a visioning plan for the village center area. Um, and while I don't necessarily think that this is what the, this grant program had envisioned, um, they asked for innovative ideas and, and give us your ideas and we might fund it. So I uh, wanted to, I, I thought it sounded like a good idea. So I was going to just run it by the select board to make sure that there were no objections or um, other thoughts for, for applying for that grant. Um, and then, What's the agency, Jeff? Uh, I I believe it's MassDOT. Okay. Or DOT. Yeah. 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 I mean, it seems like a natural grouping. Yeah. Yep. So, um, figured we would reach out to them and and try and get some of those funds and do that visioning. Give it a go. Can't hurt, right? Yeah. <clears throat> exactly. Right. All right, and then so <clears throat> I. Oh, good. No, I was going to say that that's all I had for updates. Okay. Um, and then usually right around this time, we talk about um, going over to our summer schedule. So we've got, um, usually a lot of times we'll do it right after May, but things have been a little, a little different this year. So um, we've got one more meeting in June next week in which we have a, that'll be June 29th. We have a poll hearing at that one, correct? And then we have the, um, park is it group as well so we've got a couple of things lined up for that so maybe um starting with the following well it'll be really be into july at that point um maybe we start looking at our every other week schedule okay with me Davey. what do you think scott that's fine we can always call a meeting if we need one yeah exactly so do, do you want to think we'll be busy in november Davey. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Do we want to start with the um, sixth as an off week or do the sixth as an on week, you think? Uh, makes sense to be off since the fourth is a uh, fourth. That's right. Right. Exactly. So do you want to uh, look at like drawing up like a schedule for that, Jeff? So we'd be like off the sixth on the 13th and then off the 20th, the 27th. And usually we'll target it for up to Labor Day. Yeah, that just puts it at 13, 27, 10, 24, yep. and then probably the 14th, to, right? Because Labor, Labor Day is, I don't know what day it is this year. 
think it was it the fifth. Uh, kind of my calendar, but yeah, nope. around there. Nope. Oh, in October, that would be why. Uh, let's see. October. Monday the seventh was Labor Day, so. <laughs> yeah, Monday the seventh. Yeah. So yeah, just come back the fourteenth. Right. And then, you know, we always we always set that, but you know, I don't know how many times we've been here for other meetings, so we need to we can schedule <laughs> one. I remember it's, when it's, you, when it's a goal. Yeah, it's a goal, right? When you came on, we were early, early on in your tenure, David. You rolled in. We had we had four meetings on the summer, on a summer week. It's like we're supposed to be off, right? Yeah, yeah. That's yep, what it was. <laughs> that's right. Uh, I'll never forget the first my first time on because I got a call uh, from Margaret at the time. She said, "I know you just got elected, but can you come down to Main Street because there's power lines down everywhere." Everywhere. Yep. It's always, you know, it's. It's fun to be thrown right into it. So, okay. <laughs> all right. Um, so our next meeting will be next Monday, June 29th, where we have, oh, there you go, a poll hearing in Riverside Park public meeting. So folks might want to tune into that. Um, and I think that's about all we've got tonight. Let's see if anybody has anything else that they want to uh, talk about, or if there is any public comment, actually. Anybody, any public comments out there? I see we've got a few other folks on there. All right. I would like uh, to say something if possible, David. Yes, go ahead, Aaron. Um, I just want to alert folks that uh, today in the mail, those Sunderland residences and businesses who are Eversource customers will have received a letter. And I just want to draw their attention to that and what the letter is about and why they might need to pay attention to it. I, I appreciate that. I because now that you mentioned, I got mine in the mail today as well. So that's great. Okay, so the letter which has the Sunderland town seal on it on the envelope is about something called community choice aggregation, which we've talked about um, at town meeting and at various select board meetings in the past. So this letter went out to those residents and businesses who use Eversource as their electricity supplier. If you do not use Eversource as your supplier, you will not have received this letter. And the letter details an opportunity for residents and businesses in Sunderland to take advantage of lower electricity rates and a greater amount of renewable energy than the basic service plan offered by Eversource. And this program, I should say, has been endorsed by the Sunderland Energy Committee and by the Select Board. Additionally, 12 other towns in Franklin County are joining Sunderland and taking advantage of this opportunity. And I encourage people to look at the letter and familiarize themselves with the details of this program. So if this is a program that is attractive to you, the beauty of it is you don't need to do anything. You'll be automatically enrolled. However, if you don't wish to participate, you must opt out by, there are three ways of doing this, either by signing the return, um, opt-out card that's supplied in the letter by calling Danuji, who will, be the, who will be our supplier in the future, at the phone number listed in the mailing, or online by visiting colonialpowergroup.com slash Sunderland, and then clicking on the opt-out button. It's as simple as that. So, as I said, if you're not an Eversource basic customer, basic service customer now, and you've already chosen a different competitive supplier, you will not have received this letter, and you will not be automatically enrolled. However, you may opt into this program by contacting Colonial Power Group at the address, web address I just mentioned, colonialpowergroup.com slash Sunderland. And I urge people to contact their current competitive supplier if they have one to make sure that there are no termination fees or penalties involved for switching suppliers. Sometimes there are, and you should be aware of that. So if Eversource is your current electricity supplier, there are no fees for switching in or out of the aggregation program. So uh, that's basically what that letter is about, and I uh, urge people to take a look at it and uh, review it, and if they have any questions, they can call um, Colonial Power at 508 485 5858. 
extension too. We also hope to have um, a virtual meeting with representatives from Colonial Power so that Sunderland residents can uh, ask any questions directly to them um, at, a, at a Zoom meeting. <laughs> All right, great. Thanks for that, uh, that very timely reminder, Aaron. That's, that's, that's very good. And, and it achieved kind of the goals that we set out for it of being a, a stable pricing and less expensive than ever source. And we got a little more green in there than I think we initially thought too, correct? That's correct. So and we have a, two a, additional opt-in products that are mentioned on the back of right. the letter. Both of them are 100% renewable energy, one based out of Texas and one here in our region based on Massachusetts right. class one renewable energy certificates. Those right. so are you sort things of things you have to choose as opposed to the default product, which is uh, the one outlined on the front page of the letter. Right, so you sort of get a choice of uh, more green, but you can go more local or a little farther away. So that's great. Yes. Thanks, so Aaron. Folks, I just, uh, I, if I could just yeah. add that, that if there's more information as well as um, the links that Aaron mentioned on our website, the first thing under news Perfect. and announcements is information on the program. Um, and if you have questions or you want to verify that what the letter you received is legitimate, you know, feel free to, to give us a call and we can uh, verify the information for you. Thanks. I was just going to mention the website because we've been trying to keep that up to date too. So that's great. So that's a, a good, good program. So, and it's done well by a lot of folks. So, all right. Um, I think that's about it. Do we have a, a motion to adjourn? Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.